All right, good morning, church. It's a beautiful, it was a beautiful day. I'm not sure if it still is. I think it is. Thank you all for coming. As we worship, why don't we stand? And uh, we're going to start singing with victory in Jesus. But first, I want to just uh, say a few verses. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, 57, it says, But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then in 1 Chronicles 29, verse 11, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty, for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. So no matter the week you've been going through, I just want you to, to perhaps think on those verses that we have the victory through Jesus. And as we sing, I pray that you would remember that we have the victory in Jesus no matter what your week looked like, whether it was great or it wasn't the best. Um, you can lay that, as, lay that at, God's, at Jesus' feet and you can, uh, we can celebrate the victory we have in him. So let's sing victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save our wretch like me I heard about his glory Of his precious blood atoning Then I repented of my sin And won the victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory. Please turn around and meet and greet each other.
with me in prayer. God, we are just so amazed at your greatness, and yet you still call us your children. You've called us a friend. You've made us a friend of yours. You've invited us into a relationship with you, and that, that just speaks of your greatness. And we thank you, and we praise you, and we count it a privilege this morning to be singing of your greatness and to be praising you. And so, Lord, as we continue in worship this morning, I pray that you be honored and glorified in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, church. You're going to have a seat for a moment. This morning, just want to um, do something a little different. And uh, we have a, a family... There's been a family that's been with us for a number of years now. And so I'll invite the Alvarez family to come on up. And so Hazel, Angel, and Junior, so it's, it's kind of a, 
it's a privilege to be praying with you guys today, but it's a little sad because they're going to be moving uh, far away to Florida. And so I know that, uh, yeah, oh, I know, right? That's a good reaction. Thank you. Um, so we're, we're, we're going to miss you guys. We truly are. And yet we want to just pray for you and, and send you off with a blessing as you go and you have opportunities to minister there. I know that uh, time in youth, junior high, and uh, kids' church as well, you'll be, you'll be missed. And so we just want to pray a blessing over you guys and just want to say how much of a joy it's been to have you guys a part of our church. And so uh, it's a big move, right? And so let's be praying for them and, and supporting them in any way that we can. And so if you just join your, your hearts with me this morning as we pray for this family, let's pray. God, we're just thankful, Lord, for the Alvarez family. God, thank you for what you've been doing in their hearts and their lives over the years that they've been here at Elmira Pentecostal Assembly. Let me just thank you, God, for, for your family, for your church. And God, just the blessing that each and every person is Lord, in this, in this church, and God, as we send off this family to what you have next for them, God, we do pray a blessing over their lives. We pray, Lord, that you would just go before them, Lord, that you'd surround them with your presence, Lord, that they would just experience you in, in new and wonderful ways as they go into this new place. Lord, I pray that you would just help them to be able to find another church family, Lord, another body that would just accept them, bring them in, and just be a huge blessing to them, and that they would be a blessing to that body as well, so that they can use their wonderful giftings that you have blessed them with and you've given them. Lord, we just pray, God, for your presence to be with them. Lord, that they would experience you in wonderful ways. And so, God, we're just truly thankful for this family and we want to express that this morning. We also want to just pray a blessing over them. And we thank you, God, that you, you never leave us nor forsake us no matter where we go, no matter what happens. Lord, you go with us, and we're so thankful. And we praise you, God, for this family. We praise you most of all just for your love and your goodness to us. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you guys. Thank you. Okay, let me get you a handshake, Junior. Hazel. Angel. Bless you guys. Thank you. We're going to have Michaela come, and she's going to share a few announcements. All righty, guys. So I'm Michaela, and I'm the student ministries pastor here, as you all know, or maybe don't know, but that's okay. I am the student ministries pastor here, and we're happy to have you guys here with us today, even if you're joining with us online. We are going to start off by dismissing the kids, actually. So kids, if you are up until grade four, you're welcome to go meet out in the foyer. Your leaders are happy to bring you down to kids' church, and you're going to have a blast down there, and we will miss you up here. For more information on any of these announcements that I'm going to be sharing, you can check out our website or ask to be added to our weekly email because all of the details you need to know will be there. This week, we are switching into our summer schedule. So last week was our last regular programming. So if you are a parent of anyone from grade four or grade five, I guess, on to grade 12, make sure you're added to our weekly email so you can stay in the know of how we're going to be proceeding in the summer because there won't be Friday youth. It'll be every other Wednesday. Men's Breakfast Fellowship this Tuesday at 9 a.m. here. This is the last one that is going to take place here. So if you want to join, feel free to stop by. And then it will move on to the second Tuesday in July and the second Tuesday in August, meeting at Stacked in Elmira at 8.30 a.m. So sounds like a good time if you want to join it. Parent Barbecue was last Wednesday. Thank you so, 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 so much. Can we give a round of applause to all of our volunteers? We had a great turnout. The weather held off for the most part and then downpoured in the middle of it. So we had like a 10 minute table and chair set up indoors and everything continued on. And it was a blast watching parents compete with kids and getting them all involved. It was genuinely a great time. So thank you. The car wash in Bakes Hill yesterday for our mission trip was also a huge success. So thank you to anyone who brought a car by and got it washed by our teens. They actually, the cars looked phenomenal. I got mine done and they did a great job and it was overall a really, really fun time. So thank you. There are some remains of Bake Sale goodies from that. If you want to check them out after service, feel free to grab a few. I'm sure you can drive a bargain with the students. If you want half price, just go for it. It's fine. Yeah, it's all good. Um, and then Joy Fish Fry is today. 
<laughs> I love it when you guys cheer. It's the best. Uh, it's today after service. So if you would like to join, this is for all of our 50 plus crew. It's going to be a fish fry at Brian and Marion's house. This is taking place rain or shine, I've been told. So please show up and it will happen indoors if it continues to rain the rest of the day. This is located at 10 Brown Thrasher Drive in Elmira if you need that address. Or you can talk to someone, and I'm sure most people will be able to help you figure out where that is. Please still bring a dessert or a side with you and a lawn chair if it gets nice, because that would be helpful as well. We are hosting an outdoor service on the 7th of July. Unfortunately, it won't be available via live stream or recording, but we also want to encourage you to bring a picnic lunch with you, and we'll just kind of mingle after service, have some time together, and socialize. So stick around for that. Teen Challenge is joining us on July 21st. We are hosting them. They're going to bring some incredibly powerful testimonies. I've heard many over the years, and it always just blows me away at how God is working in and through the lives of, of these young men. Mission trip, please continue to join us in prayer. We are like just under a month away already from our mission trip. So join us in prayer that this goes well, that all the final details come together, and that God genuinely uses our teens to impact the lives of the kids that we're serving. We are really looking forward to this. And if you want, there are still a few spots left to sign up for food help if you want to bring in some donations. We're almost there. So another round of applause to you guys because that was a lot of food. So thank you so, so, so much from the bottom of my heart. That saved our students a lot of money to be able to go on this trip. So we really genuinely appreciate your help in this way. And last announcement, if you want to serve, if you're looking for a way to serve here at EPA, we are still looking for a few more nursery workers and hall monitors. There are sign-up sheets on the info desk, so write your name down, and we would be happy to get you some more information on that in the coming weeks. So with that, I'm going to pass it back over to David for worship, and you guys can stand and worship. All right. Thank you, Pastor Michaela. So as we go deeper into the worship set, the songs are really focused on being in his presence. And as you may know, in his, when we are in his presence, there's fullness of joy. There, we have an opportunity to have lives restored. Uh, there's a real opportunity in his presence for things to occur, relationships mended, health restored, all sorts of, all sorts of um, added things to that. But most of all, being in his presence is, is the ultimate. So. I want you to press in on this if you have an opportunity. Um, we, we can just really capitalize, that's the wrong word, we can, we can really uh, um, press in and, and get the most of spending our time with the Lord. So uh, please come with me and do that. God, one response. I've 
worship you, Lord. Lord, we're grateful for your presence here with us today, oh God. And we're, we're thankful that your presence goes with us wherever we go. Lord, we count it a privilege to be able to praise and worship you freely. I just pray that there would not be anything hindering us from worshiping with our whole heart, with our lives. Lord, that you just continue to break down any barriers that are keeping us from experiencing you in the way that you desire for us to experience you and know you. Thank you, God, for allowing us to linger in your presence. I can just pray that your presence would continue to be in this service today as we open up your word. Pray that you continue to speak to us, you continue to move in our hearts and our lives. Lord, that you'd open up our hearts, you'd open up our minds and ears to receive all that you desire for us today. And Lord, for those that might be facing challenges and difficulties, whether it's sickness, physical sickness, or emotional challenges, spiritual, Lord, if there's things that we need healing for, God, I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would bring healing to each person here, Lord, those that aren't here with us, to family members, we just pray in Jesus' name that you would meet the needs of your people this morning. Lord, for those who are grieving, I think especially for our brother, Jeff Shantz, as he's lost his father this week, we pray, God, that you, your presence would just be so close, so near to him this week and others that are experiencing grief and loss. Lord, that they know, would know that their hope is in you Meet them in their time of need, we pray, Jesus. Again, we're thankful for this opportunity to be here in your presence together with others, worshiping you, fellowshipping together. So, Lord, be in every aspect of this service. We pray, God, that you would continue to speak to us. We pray all this in Jesus' mighty and powerful name. Amen and amen. Thank you, church. You can have a seat. Well, thank you for joining us, everyone. We're, we're glad that you're here. And uh, whether you're joining us in person or online, we are blessed that you came and have joined us this morning. Uh, my name is Greg, and I'm the interim pastor here at Elmira Pentecostal Assembly. Um, so last week was Father's Day, and if you remember the message last week, it was entitled, Talk About It. And um, I hope you had a chance to, to talk about it, to speak of, speak of God's faithfulness, to speak of God's grace and his love for you throughout the week. And I, I tried to be intentional about speaking of God's faithfulness to other people because as we, as we learned and as we talked about last week, it's through us speaking of God's faithfulness that the next generation comes to know Christ, comes to know who he is, and his wonderful, wonderful plan for our lives. And so remember, God will use your testimony no matter what it is. He'll use your testimony to impact the lives of others, impact the next generation. Now, uh, this week we are back to our five One Things message series. And we're looking at five significant occurrences of the phrase, One Thing. And if you remember that that phrase, one thing, it's an expression in Scripture that authors and and speakers, they use to express that the thing they're talking about is of utmost, utmost importance. It deserves attention. It deserves to be given priority and focus in our lives. When you hear that phrase in the Bible, one thing, it means we're to give that great attention. And we established in the first message, kind of the intro message of this series, that 
these things, they help us grow in our relationship with the Lord. And they help us become more like Jesus today than we were yesterday. And that truly is our goal as believers. And so the last message uh, in this series was on June 9th, and we looked at the rich young man, okay, the RYM, right? The rich young man's one thing that he lacked. And the one thing that he lacked was a heart fully surrendered to Jesus. And we learned how when we trust in our own self-righteousness and we begin to trust in earthly possessions, the things that we have in this life, it keeps us from being fully surrendered to God. And so this week, the one thing statement that we're going to be looking at is in Luke chapter 10. And if you want to open up your Bibles, you can turn there with me today in Luke chapter 10, starting at verse 38. So we hear this statement being said during an interaction that Jesus had with Mary and Martha when he was visiting them in their home. And so I'm going to read the scripture today again. It is Luke chapter 10, starting at verse 38, and we'll read to verse 32. And so this is what it says. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Martha, or called Mary. I'm going to do that probably all message, so just like, just, just go with it, okay? She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, answered her Martha, Martha. You're anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Let's pray this morning. God, we truly are thankful for your word. We're thankful for how you speak to us through your word. And God, may you just pierce our hearts this morning to be focused on this one thing, the one thing that is necessary. So God, do speak to us as we look into your word this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So what's taking place in the context of this passage? What is happening? Why did Jesus drop in on Martha and Mary? Well, he's on his way to Jerusalem. And so just in the chapter before, in chapter 9, verse 51, we we hear the phrase, and it says that Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem. And so he knew that it was his time, his time to go to Jerusalem, and he knew his time was coming near. And that's a phrase that's used in the Bible that means he's eventually going to be killed. They're going to take his life. They're going to crucify him on a cross. And so he set his face towards Jerusalem. He was determined to go into this next ministry phase. And so he went, he did that. He knew he was going to face accusations and death. And so he's just coming out of a very intense ministry period as well and looking into this, what's going to be the most intense part of his ministry. And so he has this welcome visit and rest at a friend's home while he's on this journey. And the passage tells us that Martha is the hostess and Mary, her sister, she was there as well. And I I just think of this, it's like, here's Jesus traveling with his disciples, coming out of an intense ministry period, and he gets to the town, he gets to Bethany, and here's Martha, and she says, come, come in. She probably heard from crowds that saw him earlier that, oh, Jesus is coming. And so Martha, she opens up her home, and I think, what an amazing gesture of hospitality, and a huge privilege for Martha to be able to host Jesus at this time. And, And I think, you know, I think of this situation, I'm like, Praise God for people with the gift of hospitality, right? Those that open up their homes and welcome you in like it's your own home and feed you and do those things. Like, do you just love people who have the gift of hospitality? I do. I love it. And, and like, if anybody's wondering, I love steak. I, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, but what a great privilege for them. And from there in this passage, there, it's like a short tale of two choices between these two sisters. What did Martha choose? What did Martha choose at this time? Well, Martha, she chose serving Jesus, right? She says, Jesus is coming. I'm going to choose to serve him 
in this way by opening up my home. And what did Mary choose? Well, Mary chose to receive from Jesus, to sit at his feet. And so at a glance, when I, when I say it that way, you're like, oh, well, those, those are good things, right? Both of those things sound like a good choice. But Jesus, he was clear about what was the better or necessary choice, as we read earlier, as the ESV puts it. The necessary thing. One thing is necessary. And so we're going to look at these two choices and learn what the one thing of greatest importance, priority, and what deserves our attention and focus in our lives, and what Jesus says that is in this passage. And you know, Jesus, he doesn't like implicitly say, like, here's the one thing that's necessary, Martha. But, it's, but we do find out what it is in the passage, and we'll dig into the passage a bit to see what it was, and that will help us to also choose the one thing that's necessary. And so let's get right into that. And by doing, to do that, I want to look at Martha's choice and why it was not the one thing that was necessary. So do you ever think, of, do you ever like look at Martha's life and be like, oh, poor Martha, right? You know, she's getting a bad rap. She's getting a bad rap, but she's like, she's the one who opened up her house and invited Jesus in. And so I think it's important to clear up one thing, right? And, and I don't, I want to say that, I want to go out on a limb here and say, Martha did not choose a bad thing, right? I don't think that she chose a bad thing. But when you look at the progression of, of this passage and what was taking place, we learn what the issue was with Mary, with Martha. I did it again. Oh, be patient with me. We're going to learn and see what the, the problem was, what the issue was with Martha's choice at this time. And so, verse 38, we see that Martha welcomes Jesus into her house. And, and again, what a wonderful thing for her to do. Verse 39, we see that Mary chooses to sit at Jesus' feet. This was a good thing too, for Mary to choose and for her to do. And this was obviously a trigger for Sister Martha, right? It was a source of frustration for her. And so possibly these sisters, maybe they weren't on speaking terms, or maybe they just didn't think about it. They didn't communicate ahead of time, right? They weren't like, okay, Jesus is coming. Here's a game plan. Mary, you're going to sit at, her feet, at his feet and like just learn everything you can about him. And then you're going like, to take notes and stuff. And on the scroll, that's, that's probably what they used back then. You're going to take notes. They didn't, have, yeah, they didn't have iPads or anything like that. So you're going to take notes and you're going to share everything with me. But you know, I want to be able to serve in the, in the kitchen, prepare some food so that he can get his rest after he eats. Or, you know, they could have been like, could have been, communicating and how they would do this and, and make that work, right? And so it's possible that they didn't clearly communicate how this was all going to go down. And so we move on into verse 40. What do we got here? Yeah, verse 40. And it says that Martha was distracted with much serving. And so I, I found this, this quote here in the Holman Illustrated Bible Dictionary, and it says, Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42 contrasts Martha's activist discipleship. Interesting, right? Interesting way of thinking of it, kind of the activist discipleship. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve Jesus, and that's kind of my, my discipleship at that time. So uh, it contrasts Mary's, Martha's activist discipleship with Mary's contemplative discipleship. The church cannot minister without Martha's who are willing to serve alone. Jesus' gentle rebuke serves as a perpetual reminder not to major on minor matters. Jesus must not be neglected in the name of service. I, I love it, right? That's, that's pretty cool. I, I like how they're talking about majoring on the minors. And, and I think that really hits the mark here. Serving must take place. And even at times, I believe that that's necessary for us to do. You know, and I think of, of our church, I think of Amara Pentecostal Assembly and, and people's heart to serve, to spend, to invest their time, invest their resources in order that, that we, can, we can do this together, 
that we can meet together, we can worship together, we can have different events, we can, we can fry up some fish and, and eat it together. Like that's, that's an opportunity to serve so that we would have fellowship together. And, and that's a good thing. And at times, it's necessary. But not when Jesus is there, he's beckoning and he's saying, come, sit at my feet, feast at my table on the bread of life and drink of the living water. It's when we go and we make that the priority. When we make that, we allow that to become a distraction in our lives. And what this quote is saying here is that serving Jesus is the minor thing compared to nourishing our souls with the presence of Jesus through time, quiet time with him, time in his word, prayer, and seeking his presence. When we seek to be discipled, when we seek to grow in our relationship with Jesus, that is the priority. So we're talking about distractions here. And I can tell you, my generation knows a little bit about distractions. So I was born in 82, you can do the math, you now know how old I am. I was born in 82, so I'm kind of on like the Gen X and the uh, millennial generation side. And so I think like our generation was, was the one who started really experiencing, uh, you know, electrical devices and spending a lot of, you know, doing this, the first ones to get carpal tunnel from doing this and stuff like that. It's like, you know, kind of pathetic, right? And so, you know, I think I know a bit about distractions. Uh, I think that our millennial generation knows a bit about distractions. I think the Gen Zs and then what's next? The al- Alpha? Is that, what the, is that right? Gen Alpha? Am I right? I think that's like the next one coming up. But let me, okay, boomers, listen to me here, okay? You're not off the hook. I've seen it. It's it's hit you too, right? Huh? A little bit of this, right? So we know, we know about distraction in our generations. So um, we know about distraction. And we have got to catch this. You think of, think of this, this passage here, right? What was Martha distracted with, right? She was distracted with much serving. So I have to think, and I'm going to put it up on the screen there, how much more of a rebuke would would we receive for our distractions that steal away such important and valuable time with our Savior, right? We think about it. So moving on in the verses, in verse 40, the second part of verse 40, so Martha, we can see in in that, this portion of scripture that uh, Martha, she reaches a boiling point of unbearable frustration and annoyance in her sister, and she thinks, and that's never happened here with anybody with their sister, right? Never. No? Those with sisters say, amen. Amen. Oh my goodness, that was weak. (laughs) I guess maybe you have experienced this. So she reaches this point of frustration and annoyance, and she thinks to herself, she's like, enough. Enough is enough. I'm the only one pulling my weight around here, getting all the necessary things done, and it is not fair. I'm going to the man. I'm going to talk to Jesus, right? And here comes the nastiness of her pride rearing its ugly head. And she says to Jesus, don't you care? Don't you care that I'm the only one doing the things around here? That, that this lazy excuse for a sister isn't pulling her weight around here? I'm just, I'm adding to it, right? It could have been like this. It could have been. And then what does she say? She says, tell her, right? She's like, she's like demanding Jesus. She's like, tell her. Tell her to get, get off of her, get to work. And... <laughs> And do something to help me out here, right? And you know, you can just see when you're reading through this, right? It's like when we don't put first things first, when we begin to major on the minors by being super busy with distractions, even sometimes busy with good distractions like Martha was, right? Look at what it does to our heart, to our character, to our attitude, right? Like, look what it did to Martha. And then what do we do, right? We blame Jesus 
for our burnout, for our troubles, and for our stress. We say, don't you care? Jesus, don't you care what I'm facing in my life? Don't you know that this is not the way that it should be? And then we begin to demand Jesus to do it our way. We say, tell her. Tell this situation. Tell this situation. Make it better. Change it for me. Fix it for me. When it's like, it's often because of our choices to be distracted with many, many things. When we... What, what if Martha, what if she had continued serving with joy? If they had that conversation before, right? And be like, okay, here's the game plan, Mary. She continued to serve with joy in her heart and a heart of humility as well, knowing that her sister was benefiting from becoming a disciple of Jesus, from learning from him, from sitting at his feet, from growing in her faith. Or, or what if she would have just like pushed the food to the back burner, Right? Just let it keep getting warm. And she pushed it to the back burner and she said, yes, the food can wait. What is important here is that Jesus is in the house. The rabbi is here and I can learn from him. I can sit at his feet. And they could have all like cooked together, right? Jesus would have went out to the barbecue, flipped some steaks. Mary and Martha would have been doing their thing, cooking, right? And so you see that, that things could have been so much different here if she would have chose the thing that was necessary as well. And so then in verse 41, yeah, we're good. Verse 41, Jesus then names what is going on with Martha. She names what is, he names what's keeping her from the one thing. And Jesus says, you're anxious and you're troubled about a lot of things in life, about many things. And we see that Martha, she passed up an an amazing opportunity for fellowship, for discipleship, and growing when Jesus was present in her home. And instead of choosing the necessary things, she became distracted with many things. And not only did she miss the opportunity for fellowship and discipleship, but her distractions drove her to a place of being in not a great place emotionally. And we see it there, we've read it there. And so my question for us, for us today is, are, are we distracted? Are we distracted with many things that are making us anxious and troubled? And you know what? There's good news. There is good news, and it's the good news, right? That Jesus desires for you, and he said what he desires for you, and and he says, and he's inviting you and calling to you. And we read it in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. It says, come to me. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And so this morning, I want to encourage us, choose the one thing that is necessary as Mary did. And so what was that one thing? That's the question we're trying to answer this morning. What was Mary's choice? What was Mary's choice and why was that the one thing that was necessary? And so we read about it in verse 39 earlier when when uh, we're just getting kind of an introduction to what's taking place here. In verse 39, it says, And Martha had had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. And that verse is what reveals what the one thing that is necessary. It reveals the one thing that's necessary, and that's close fellowship with the Lord. In verse 42, Jesus he talks about this one thing that's necessary. And that, that's it, guys. That, that is what it is. The thing that is of great importance, that should be priority in our lives, that something that deserves our greatest attention and focus is close fellowship with Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. And I was reading, uh, I was reading an article on DesiringGod.org and someone by the name of Lisa Chan, who's the, the wife of Francis Chan, who's a pastor down in the States, she says this, and it's really good insight. It's, it's a wonderful article um, written kind of from the perspective of a woman to other women, being that this is, is about two women in a home and their different choices. And so Lisa Chan, she says, Jesus, our Lord, said only one thing is necessary. If this were a suggestion from a friend or an idea from a great book, 
I might be able to dismiss it as simplistic. But this is Jesus. He's not simplistic. He's speaking to a woman's heart and cutting right through her every defense. And listen, we must take time out of our busy schedules to spend time with Jesus in his word, in quietness, in prayer, and being at church in fellowship with him and others. It's, it's, it's good, but is there anything wrong with it? Is there anything wrong with that statement? Did, did, you, catch, did you catch it? What, what's, what's wrong with that? Uh, nothing? Anything at all? Okay. I, I think there's something, there's something wrong with it. The, the, the premise is good. But listen, th- this, is, this is what it should read. Okay? Do, do you see what I stroke out there? Because the first phrase, it's like all the other things in life are the things that are necessary, right? It's like we've got our schedules, that's set. Like this is life, this is, this is how life looks and it should be. And then we can squeeze in Jesus' time when we're able, right? Or we should take time out of our busy schedules to yeah, fit Jesus in there somewhere, get him in there, Right? But it should read, we must choose. It's a choice, right? Martha and Mary, they had that choice. We must choose to make spending time with Jesus in quietness, his word in prayer, and being at church in fellowship with others a priority. We've got to choose to make that a priority. You you understand me here? You understand the difference between the the two phrases, right? Now you can say, that's good. Say it, that's good. That's good, right? We've got to make that a priority. And, and Lisa Chan, again, in that same article, it's, it's really cool how she, she puts it as well. And, and think, like, kind of read these words in, in a way that it's like, yeah, like that's life, right? Listen, as the world careens on, on in all its frenetic madness and many demands insist on our attention, what? What can we do? We can become people who choose to be still, sit at the Lord's feet and listen to his voice, for it's in his word that we will receive the good portion we need most. And I believe she's got it right. She's totally got it right here. Our life, you know, I said earlier that this passage is a tale of two choices. I want to tell you, our life is a tale of two choices as well. Will we choose to build our life around what our culture tells us is necessary? The stuff, the certain achievements, what we need to be really doing life properly, to be living, you know, living as we think that we should. And then squeeze in our Jesus time when we can. Or do we choose to put Jesus first and then build our life around that relationship. That is what Jesus is getting at here, and that's what he's saying is necessary. In verse 42, in the second part there, Jesus said that Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. And my encouragement to all of us this morning is for us to choose the good portion today. We need to put put. Jesus first, choose close fellowship with him because we know that that will never, ever be taken away from us. Nobody can steal our time with Jesus away, right? We read in the Psalms how, you know, the the grass and the flowers, they fade away. This this world and the things that we have, the things that we, we gain, they eventually will fade away. They will. But nobody can steal away your portion, when you say, Jesus is my portion, when, I, when we spend time with Jesus and we develop our relationship with him, that will never fade away. No one can take that away from us. And that statement that Mary has chosen the good portion, uh, as the, the ESV study Bible, it, it points out that it echoes Old Testament passages where the greatest possession 
is close fellowship with the Lord as one's portion in life. And one of my favorite verses is in Psalm chapter 73, verses 25 to 26, and it says there, Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. I hope that we can make this our prayer, that that we can make this our commitment and say, yes, that is what truth is. That, that earth, yes, I mean, God has blessed us in many different ways and, and praise God that we get to enjoy those many blessings. Thank you, God, for that. But, you know, there, there's nothing really to be desired when we compare it to Jesus, right? And in heaven, you know, we talk about, wow, we get to you, you hear of heaven and all the different things that we get to experience. Wow, praise God we get to do that. But what we desire is Jesus, We want to see Jesus. And even though my flesh may fail, one day we will pass away. And we've been reminded of that this week with the passing of of Danny Shantz. My flesh will fail. My heart will fail. There's times I become discouraged. I face challenges. But who's the strength of my heart and my portion, my everything? God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Make that your prayer and your desire today. The one thing that is necessary that's of greatest importance in life is close fellowship with Jesus, to know him, to make him our only portion in life, to make him our greatest possession, our treasure beyond all measure. That is what is necessary. And so what does this all boil down to? And there's, there's a common theme running through the, these different topics that we're facing. And again, it boils down to a heart issue. It boils down to our heart. Because what is keeping us from making the necessary choice of having close fellowship with Jesus? You've heard me say it before, and in the last message, it was a major heart issue with the rich young man when he went away sad, Right? because he had great possessions. And he turned away and said, I can't do that. I can't give you my heart. I can't be fully surrendered to you because my heart is somewhere else. And today, that is what it is for Martha as well, saying, listen, your serving is beautiful. It's wonderful, but what is necessary? Put your heart in the wrong, right, put your heart in the right place and serve me. Doing for Jesus over being with Jesus is the issue here, just like we learn. And Ben, I'm going to call you back up, and we're going to close off today. We're going to sing that song again, linger, and have an opportunity just to be in God's presence. But as as I was preparing for this week, uh, David, he he mentioned something. He says, oh, you know, this is is a great topic because oftentimes, you know, we think of summer, we think about, wow, you know, this is, this is the time that we get to be refreshed, right, that during the summertime. Well, I, I kind of ag- agreed with you, and at the same time, I'm like, man, this, this is our first, like, we had summer last year in Canada here, but this is the first time we're, we're a little more settled, but they're not going to be settled. Anyway, I'm like, man, summer is like crazy. Summer's crazy in Canada, right? It's like, oh, you got to plan all these different things, and then this is where you, like, jam all the holidays in. When we were in the Philippines, it was like perpetual summer for us, right? It's like, do you want to go to the beach? Oh, no, it's winter. No, it didn't matter. You go to the beach, right? It's still hot. But, like, here it's, it's like you got to plan these things. you got to take advantage because this is the time you get outside. This is the time you enjoy, like, like life out of the darkness, and, and you enjoy life, right? And so I was, I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about, This idea of, you know, summer is a time of refreshment. You know, that's what we're talking about here, is being in God's presence, being with Jesus, learning from him, sitting at his feet, and taking that opportunity. And summer is that opportunity that we have to, like, wow, refreshment, get to enjoy these different things. And it made me think of, and you guys, you can go ahead and start playing. It'd be good. It'd be awesome. Um, I was thinking of a summer vacation. Anybody got, like, a family summer vacation planned? Anybody? few people yeah awesome 
I was thinking, like, what if, what if you, like, you plan this vacation, and, and as a family, like, my goal is, man, let's go and let's spend time as a family. We can really, you know, invest in relationship as a family, right? Like, that, that really should be the purpose, I think, of a family vacation. We have time to grow in relationship together, enjoy each other's fellowship. What if you plan that vacation, and you're, like, you're taking a trip, taking a long trip, say traveling somewhere in the country, and you invest like time and research. You invest money into where you're going to stay, and it's like you're spending all that time doing that. And then it's like you've got all your excursions planned too, right? We're going here, and next we're going to go there, and then we're going to go to the next place. You've got all these things planned, and you've got it jam-packed in that whole vacation. It's like you go, you do it, you're running from like one experience to the next. You finish the vacation and you come back and you're completely exhausted. And you had like no time together as a family. You were together, you know, like kind of like Jesus in our lives. Like he's here, he's with us. But you didn't have any time to like build relationship and to really, really fulfill the purpose of that vacation where it's like we came and we wanted a fellowship and we wanted to spend time as a family and grow together as a family. We wanted our children to be encouraged in their faith. And it's like you get back and you're like, oh, we had some amazing experiences, but like what a waste. What a waste of our time together, right? And as I thought through that, I I wondered if this sometimes happens with you and Jesus. And listen, if I got one pointing out there, I've got three pointing back, right? Does this happen with me and my relationship with Jesus? Where it's like, I've got all these different serving things planned, and that's, you know, this is what it means for, for me to truly be, you know, somebody who's a Christian, and all of these things that I have planned, and it's like, oh, I've completely left out the main priority a fellowship with Jesus, sitting at his feet, being discipled, growing in my faith, reading his word, being with him. Might even be good things like Martha, right? It could be those nasty and unnecessary distractions in my life. And, and I want to ask us today, are you distracted with many things? Are you distracted with many things? Are those things making you anxious and troubled? I've been guilty of it. It's a lot going on, a lot going on in our lives. I know for you as well too. And today I just, would you just stand with me and and we're gonna finish today. We're gonna finish with this song. And I just, I wanna invite us in this moment and be like, yeah. You know, that's, that's me. I've, I've been distracted with many things. I'm, I'm on this journey with Jesus, right? I'm on this adventure with him. But the main purpose is for me to have fellowship, for me to have relationship with him, come to know him more, grow in my relationship. And, and I've completely missed the mark. I've like planned all these things and I'm just squeezing in fellowship with Jesus. And so if you're anxious today, you're feeling troubled, Maybe think about the choices. Is it due to the choices? It it might not be, but it definitely could be. So let this be a reminder to us as we take this time to fellowship, to sit at his feet, to experience his presence. Let it also be a reminder that this needs to be priority in our lives every day. Not just when we come to church. I I love these times together. They're great. We, We should not change them or exchange them for anything, right? This is really a time when we come together, experience God's presence. That's good. But we have to be doing, this This isn't enough is what I'm saying. We've got to be in God's word throughout the week. We've got to be spending time in fellowship with him, right? It's not enough just to come on a Sunday and say, wow, good, I'm, I'm recharged. I'm hoping that, you know, I'm hoping that charge lasts me for like 700 kilometers, even when the car only has a range of 500, right? So be in fellowship with Jesus. Choose the one thing that's necessary, and that's close fellowship with Jesus. And so we're going to sing this this morning. Um, 
you can, you can sing, you can praise there. If you, if you wanted to come to the front and sing and praise, kneel down, whatever you believe you need to do for you to say, yes, Jesus, I choose the one thing necessary. And that's close fellowship with you. You lead us, guys. through this morning. Let's worship God. Thank you for being our refuge, your God. Pass up this opportunity, church. Let's press in and experience God's presence. Keep me present in this moment. There's more you want to do. Yes, Lord God, do that in our lives today. You are my sanctuary, my upper. further than we've been before. Yes, Lord Jesus, we want more of you today. I want to go deeper. I want to go further than I've ever been before. Sing it, church. Sing it from your hearts this morning.
Jesus. God, we're thankful for these times that you invite us into your presence. You invite us to sit at your feet. You say, I've come. I've come to your home. Your presence is with us. Lord, help us, God, to be sitting at your feet, to be desiring to know you more and to grow in our relationship with you. Lord, give us those wonderful and sweet opportunities all throughout the week, even in unexpected and surprising places. God, I pray that we would just be aware of your presence in our lives and that we would just, we would press in and we would experience you. We would grow in our relationship with you. Help us, Lord God, to focus on and to make it a priority of spending time in your word and prayer and in fellowship with you. Lord, I pray a blessing on our week ahead. I pray a blessing, Lord, um, as we go and as we go about the things that you have led us to and called us to. I pray you continue to provide for all of our needs, provide safety. Lord, provide, provide for our needs financially, emotionally, and spiritually as well, oh God. We're asking and we know, God, that you will work and you will provide in miraculous ways. We give you praise, oh God. We worship and we honor you. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. And can we all say together, amen and amen. Church, bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday. God bless.